Let's be honest, you've probably spent a significant portion of your life clicking on things without really having the faintest clue as to what's happening inside that glowing box in front of you. Today, I'll explain how computer viruses work to you like you're five years old, and by the end of this, you'll finally understand why your tech-savvy friend shrieks in horror when you say you found a great website for free movies. First off, you need to understand what a computer program even is. And no, it's not magic. A program is just a list of instructions, kind of like a recipe for baking a cake. You tell the computer, step one, get the flour. Step two, get the eggs. Step three, mix them together. And the computer follows the instructions and you get a cake. Or I guess in this case, a working app or a website. It's a very obedient but very dumb chef that does exactly what it's told. Now, a good program is a good recipe. It tells the computer how to do something useful like let you watch videos or cats or stalk your high school crush online. But a computer virus is also a program. It's also a recipe. The big difference though is that this recipe is for disaster and it's written by a mean person. It's a bad recipe and it might start the same way. Step one, get the flour. Step two, get the eggs. But then there's a secret nasty instruction hidden inside. Step seven, now throw all the eggs at the wall and set the curtains on fire. Now the computer being the perfectly obedient little blockhead that it is just says, okay, and does it. The virus is then part of the recipe that tells your computer to do bad things. And that's it. It's just a set of mean instructions. Now, a virus can't just appear out of nowhere. It doesn't magically grow inside your computer like mold on bread. You have to let it in. Someone has to trick you into running the bad recipe on your computer, and it needs to hitch a ride on something else, just like a cold virus needs to hitch a ride on a sneeze to get from one person to another. Now, your computer can't catch a virus from another computer just by sitting next to it. You, the user, are almost always the one who has to open the door and invite the monster inside. So, how do you accidentally do that? Well, there are a few very popular ways. The most common one is through sneaky emails. You get an email that looks super important and it might say, your package has been delayed, or you have an urgent invoice to pay, or my personal favorite, you've won a million dollars. Inside is a link or file and your curiosity simply gets the best of you. Your brain screams, this could be important, or I could be rich. So you quickly open it and, oops, you just opened the front door, laid down a welcome mat, and offered the bad guy a cup of tea. That link or file contained the bad recipe, and by clicking on it, you told your computer, hey, run these instruction please, and your computer, bless its heart, happily obliged. Now, another way is by downloading things from sketchy places on the internet. I mean, you want a piece of expensive software for free or a movie that's still in theaters? Well, you find a website that looks a little weird with lots of flashy ads, but hey, it's what you want. You download the file, and you get your movie. Hooray! But attached to that movie file is a little unwanted friend. A nasty little program that tagged along for the ride. It's like ordering pizza and having it delivered by a clown who then refuses to leave your house. Sure, you got your pizza, but now you have a bigger problem. That free thing you downloaded was the transportation for the virus. So, once the bad recipe is on your computer, what happens? Well, that depends on what kind of mean person wrote it. There are different types of digital troublemakers, and they all have very different goals. But let's talk about the big ones. First up, we have the famous Trojan horse. If you know the old story, then you already get it. The ancient Greeks built a giant wooden horse as a gift, and their enemies, the Trojans, thought, wow, a free horse, how nice, and pulled it right inside their big walled city. But then that very night, Greek soldiers who were hiding inside the horse climbed out, opened the city gates, and the whole Greek army rushed in. A Trojan horse program works the exact same way. It pretends to be something you want. It might be a fun little game, a useful looking calendar app, or even an antivirus program that claims to protect you. It looks good on the outside. So you install it and it might even work. The game is fun, the calendar works, but hidden inside, it's also doing something terrible. It could be quietly stealing your passwords or letting other bad programs onto your computer. The Trojan horse is a trick. It's a bad thing disguised as a good thing. Remember that, a Trojan horse is a trick. Next up is the worm. This one is a little different and a lot scarier. A virus, like we said, needs to be attached to something. It needs you to click on a bad file or run a bad program. A worm, though, is more independent. It's a bratty teenager who doesn't need a ride from its parents. A worm can simply spread all by itself. It looks for the weakness in your computer security. And these weaknesses are like tiny little unclogged doggy doors on a network. The worm finds one, wiggles its way in, and sets up shop on your computer. 
It doesn't need you to really click anything. Once it's inside, its main job is to simply make copies of itself. It then sends those copies out to find other computers on the same network with the same unlocked doggy door. It's like a single sneaky snake getting into your house and then immediately laying a thousand eggs that all hatch into more sneaky snakes that go and find your neighbor's houses. A worm spreads all by itself, which is what makes it so fast and dangerous. Then we have what might be the meanest of them all, ransomware. This one is pure evil genius. It's literally digital kidnapping. I mean, this bad recipe, once it runs, doesn't just break things. It goes through your entire computer and finds all of your important stuff. Your family photos, your work documents, your secret novel that you've been writing for 10 years. It takes all of it and locks it up in a super strong digital box. You can still see the files are there, but you can't open them. Then a message pops up on your screen and it's a ransom note. It basically says, haha, I have all your precious memories. If you ever want to see them again, you have to pay me money. It's a bully who has taken your favorite toy, put it in a locker and is now selling you the key. It's financial eviction, and it wrecks your credit like a toddler with a crayon on a white wall. Except, it's not your credit. It's your digital life. Ransomware holds your stuff hostage until you pay. Oh, and let's not forget about spyware. Now, this one is less about destruction and more about being a creepy little peeping Tom. Spyware is a program designed to, well, spy on you. It hides on your computer and quietly watches everything you do. It records the websites you visit, the things that you search for, what you buy, and sometimes even your passwords and credit card numbers. It's like having a tiny invisible person hiding under your desk with a little notebook, writing down everything you type. Then it sends that notebook full of your private information back to the person who made it. And they might use it to steal your identity, or they might just sell it to advertising companies. Ever wonder why you searched for a new pair of shoes one time and now you see ads for those exact shoes on every single website you visit for the next month? It's not a coincidence. It's often spyware acting like a little tattletale. Spyware is a digital spy, and it's very good at its job. So, the goals of these bad recipes are all different. Some just want to cause chaos and slow your computer to a crawl, making it feel like it's running through mud. Some want to use your computer as a soldier in their robot army, a botnet, to attack other websites. Many want to steal your information for money, and your bank login is a lottery ticket for them. But your personal details can also be sold. And some are just digital vandalism, written by people who think it's funny to delete your files just because they can. It's like someone walking down the beach and kicking over every sandcastle they see for no reason other than that they enjoy watching things break. Now, you're probably terrified to ever touch a computer again, but don't be. All you have to do is be smart. You wouldn't eat candy that you found on the sidewalk, right? So don't click on links from strangers. Think before you click. This is the number one rule. If an email seems too good to be true, then it is. If a website offering free stuff looks shady, it is. It's like your mom telling you not to talk to strangers, but for the internet. Now, the second thing you need is a good antivirus program. And this is your computer's personal bodyguard. It stands at the front door and checks the ID of every program that tries to run. When it sees a program with a bad recipe, it grabs it by the collar and throws it in digital jail before it can do any damage. It's like buying your computer a helmet in case you crash the bike. It's a layer of protection for you when you inevitably make a mistake. And finally, keep your computer updated. Those annoying little update reminders that you always click remind me tomorrow, they're important. They often contain fixes for those little security holes, the unlocked doggy doors that worms love to crawl through. When you update your software, you're patching the holes, you're locking the windows and fixing the fences. It makes it much, much harder for the bad guys to get in without you personally inviting them. And so, there you have it. That's the whole secret. A computer virus isn't some mythical curse or a ghost in the machine. It's just a set of instructions, a bad recipe written by a person with mean intentions. It needs you to be careless. It needs you to click the weird link, download the sketchy file, and ignore the security warnings. It simply relies on human error. So, to recap for the five-year-old in you, the computer virus is a mean program that breaks your stuff, steals your toys, or spies on you. Some viruses trick you into letting them in, like a Trojan horse. Some sneak in all by themselves through unlocked windows, like a worm. And some lock up your toys and make you pay to get them back, which is just plain mean. You see? You get it now. It's not dark magic. It's just a set of bad instructions that you know how to avoid now. So go forth. Avoid clicking on those weird links. Your computer and your sanity will thank you.